Today's video is brought to you by our friends at Shricky's Barbershop. Where tradition meets excellence, owned by Dan Shrickerwaff, also known as Shwicky, who has been in the game for 20 plus years. From the moment you step through those doors, you know you're in for a treat. These guys just don't cut hair, they're experts. And let me tell you, they're diligent about making sure that every snip is perfect. It's not just a barber shop, it's a family friendly haven. You can bring the whole crew and everyone will leave with a smile on their face. Thanks again to Shwicky's Barbershop for sponsoring this video. Welcome everybody to another episode of Brick by Brick. Here we have great conversation usually centered around commercial real estate. And today is no exception. I'm super, super, super excited to have my guest today. I've been waiting to sit down and have a conversation with them. In many instances, I'm working with clients when I do this show. And again, today is no exception. I have Justin and Jenny the curators, the proprietors of Wishbowl Food Shop here in Richmond that has taken the city by storm, one of the best eateries for breakfast and lunch. And today we're gonna have a conversation, learn all about them, learn about the concept behind Wishbowl Food Shop, and you guys can come on down and check them out. But let's have a conversation first. How are you guys doing today? <laughs> we're good. We're, we're really good. Appreciate you guys. Yeah, I know we just closed after a busy day. Today was a good day? Today was a good day, yes. Yeah. Good, good. Breakfast and lunch. Um, I've had some of both, as you can tell. I'm a professional eater. <laughs> and so this is one of my favorite places to hang out. And not only is the food good, but the people are better. And so, again, this, gives, this platform gives great people like you an opportunity to share your story. Because we believe that when people know who you are and know more about you, they can relate to you, they can appreciate you, and come patronize you. And that's what we want. We want to make friends and enjoy good food. So, Justin, I know I know your story, but I want you to share a little bit of your story with everybody. Um, you've been in the um, industry for quite some time, so tell us about how you started and what brought you to this very point in time. I guess uh, it's will be 35 years that I've been working in restaurants in some facet. Yeah. Uh, my first job was 15, dishwashing. <laughs> <laughs> and that's where it starts. That's where it's it starts. Normally, yeah, or the fryer. <laughs> um, but then I cooked off and on uh, just for, like, little catering places. I ended up going to culinary school at Johnson & Wales University in Rhode Island. Okay. And then I came back, and uh, my first professional job was at La Mer. Mm. And the Jefferson Hotel. Yes. And then I worked at Millie's down in the uh, bottom for a while. Okay. And then moved out to the West Coast for about 13 years. So that California? Yes. Okay. Well, I went to Arizona for one year. Okay. I worked at a resort, the Fairmont Resort out there. And then I moved to Los Angeles and worked at a lot of different places. Um, there, I was probably there for about 10 years. Completely different market in Virginia. Totally different market, got exposed to a lot of different foods, uh, ingredients, cultures, everything. It was a culture shock. Okay. But um, <laughs> it was awesome. It was a really good experience. Right. So I think moving back to Richmond in 2012, I've taken a lot from like where I've been. Right. And what I developed what I like now. Right. To what I make here. <laughs> so in 2012, were you at the Lamar then? No, in 2012, I moved. No, I was at La Mer probably in 96 or 7. Okay. I think 96 or 97. Okay. I moved back to Virginia in 2012. Okay. Where uh, I was kitchen manager at Comfort. Oh, yes. When I first moved back. Yes, yes, yes. So. That was I'm a great concept that when I came to the city. Yeah. It really took off. Yeah, and Jason Alley, he's a great guy. Right. He's awesome. We talked to, talk to him today, awesome. actually. Yeah, comfort was good. Um, yeah, so I've worked there, and then I helped open Union Market up mm. in Churchill. Yes. At 23rd Jefferson. Yes. Helped open that, and then um, I've actually worked there twice. I went back there during the pandemic to help mm. to work, and they were so busy. Yes. You know, so. And then we started this idea probably last May. 
April? Probably about that time, yeah. About starting our own thing. Right. And here we are. Here we are. <laughs> it, and it's crazy. Right. Uh, it's it's <laughs> that we're finally here. Right, because we met in June, July. Yeah. We kind of got the ball rolling on this place, and it was on former restaurant and you were able to come in and, and replace the tenants who who had to move on to other opportunities and you guys hit the ground running and you converted this space into what it is today and so let's talk about wishbone food shop and the menu the concept and uh, the reach that you were looking to um have with this concept well with this space that, you know, you brought us to, it's just like, I've been in this room in the mid nineties. So it's like, it's already familiar in a way, but, um, it's already, it's kind of divided itself up into two different rooms already. So wishbone food shop, we're starting with breakfast and lunch. We're focusing on that and just getting that nailed down to where we're really happy with everything that we're doing. Um, but we plan on, in calling it a food shop, we plan on evolving. Right. Like, this side will eventually evolve into a market of yes. grab-and-go stuff that we make here, start carrying wine and certain snacks and stuff for um, the people that actually live downtown. I mean, that population is growing. Definitely. Day by day. Definitely. Um, so it's a big enough space that we can grow into. Let's talk. Just let's talk about the menu, and um, you know, um, on the breakfast side first. What was the premise, the thought behind the offerings? And tell me some of your favorites, or more importantly, some of the okay. customers' favorites. Well, the breakfast. Um, I get up really early anyway. <laughs> so I was I was thinking as like you know, let's open a place that opens at seven o'clock in the morning. That's generally like an hour before anybody needs to be at work. And we will have, you know, fresh hot coffee. That's awesome. We, like, make our sausages in-house, like our breakfast and our chorizo. Um, and just have a lot of options, whether it's coffee, a quick breakfast sandwich, or if you want to sit down and have, like, a whole meal, you can. Um, or you can just be in and out. Right. Um, some of our popular things are, like, our... I do, like, a... What is it? A baked egg kimchi sandwich. Um, so I bake eggs into like squares, uh, house made kimchi. Right. Uh, that's vegetarian. Um, do slices of avocado, cilantro, and a little bit of Duke's mayonnaise. And that's a great breakfast sandwich. Duke's mayonnaise. Yes. <laughs> we do live in Richmond. <laughs> Absolutely. We live in Richmond. Is there any other mayonnaise but Duke's? Not the, their salad dressing. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. But there's only one Dukes. So that's good. Um, and then we have like our another big seller is we do a six street breakfast. Okay. Which consists of? So it's like your choice of eggs, how you want them cooked, uh, breakfast, uh, sausage, bacon, grits or potatoes, toast. It's more complete meal. Right. But um, breakfast burrito. Do you? Breakfast burrito. Jeff had. Tell them about the breakfast burrito. Breakfast burrito, I make it with uh, uh, pepto beans that I make a sofrito for, like just puree, like garlic and chilies and tomatoes and onions and cook down the pepto beans and that. Um, Monterey Jack cheese, um, eggs, crema. Roll that up and I make a house-made hot sauce. A, yeah. A sauce called Red Dawn. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's, like, the only hot sauce we have. Yeah. Um, but that's, like, a red chili Fresno with, like, a burnt orange in it. Is so it very tasty. So and it has... So it's, like, floral and heat. Yes, yes, yes. I think yes. it's pretty nice. It goes together. It's definitely nice. <laughs> breakfast burrito. So that's the breakfast side. And then um, you're, you're great and conscious enough to think about the people who can't get up as early as you. But then by the time they I'm get still up here. Going, <laughs> and you're serving lunch. So let's talk about lunch and some of the concepts you have in lunch and some of the ideas with the, uh, with the people and uh, demographics you're trying to reach with your um, lunch menu. 
uh, with our lunch, like right now, we're pretty much focused on the business business crowd, um, and that's like we need to just do really fast service because most people only have like forty five minutes an hour to get something. Right. So our focus is on sandwiches and salads right now, soups. Right. Um, everything we make is in house. Right. Um, we do buy bread, but right. you know. <laughs> Uh, some of the biggest sandwiches I'd say are like the tomato. F- we have a tomato fig sandwich, mm-hmm. uh, which is like grilled sourdough with like a pesto mayonnaise, um, marinated figs, roasted tomatoes, and taleggio cheese, like an Italian brie-ish kind of funky cheese, and that melts into it. And people, we're getting really good response with that. All right. That's one of our best sellers yet. That and probably chicken sandwich. Chicken sandwich from the Italian beef. Oh, and then Italian beef sandwich. We got a couple. Of <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we got what, 12, 13 things? <laughs> uh, great lunch, great lunch experience though. I think so. I mean, we've got like vegetarian items, we have right. vegan items, uh, chicken beef. Uh, I think we cover the board pretty much on, we can do gluten free. Right. We're definitely open for um, dietary restrictions, and I think we do really good flavors with that, too. I agree. Lunch crowd, you guys, service is um, very um, fast and efficient. We're in the old Eskimo um, pie building, for those of you who are uh, familiar with architecture here in the city. And right next door are three to four floors worth of businesses, and obviously they can come right through that door. Eight floors, and then come come right through that door and, and and get lunch, and then they're back off to work. And so, location is great. The service is efficient. Um, but I want to ask you a question. By being um, clearly one of the best providers of food in the city, Richmond over the last ten to fifteen years has had an explosion. You know, with various concepts and. It's really known as a food foodie town across across the nation. From your perspective, why has that happened? Hey guys, before we dive back into today's content, allow me to take a moment to give a big shout out to our sponsor, Hope Pharmacy. Your one-stop destination for all your pharmacy needs. Located inside Church Hills Market at 25th Grocery Store, Hope Pharmacy is your trusted full-service pharmacy dedicated to serving the community, committed to serving everyone. Offering a comprehensive range of services, Hope Pharmacy is committed to providing quality care at competitive prices. From medication synchronization to medication therapy management, they've got you covered. Plus, with free delivery within a 10-mile radius, auto refills, and a wide range of immunizations available, they ensure convenience and accessibility for all of their customers. So whether you need prescriptions filled, expert advice, or simply want a hassle-free pharmacy experience, visit Hope Pharmacy today. Check out their website or stop by in stores to see how they can help you take control of your health. Now back to the video. Jenny and then and then and then Justin, you time time in. Why has that happened? <laughs> I don't know. I mean probably I feel like Richmond has a big creative base. Yes. And you know, cooking is creativity. Yes. Um, and maybe it's a little bit, you know, it. I feel like a lot of people from Richmond, after they finish school, they'll go to New York and then they'll come back down. Or, <laughs> you know, you find... Or they go out west and yeah, come back. Or they go to Atlanta right. and then they come back and it's, you know, Richmond is getting expensive right but i feel like based like in new york it's a little bit more economical yes <laughs> a little, <laughs> little bit but yeah i mean i feel like it's just from the a creative standpoint you've got a lot of creative people right in richmond i never looked at it like that you know got the school of arts here and then, um there's been an explosion creative justin right i think richmond's always been a creative place okay um there wasn't a lot going on, like in the, I would say like the mid nineties, Right. you know, I felt like after I worked at La Mer and Millie's, I was right. good. Right. <laughs> right. There was no other place at the time I was really burning to work at. Right. So 
you know, getting out, that definitely opened my eyes up to a lot more. Um, but coming back, you know, it was, it was a huge change, huge transition. There was a lot more options and, um, just a lot of positive people doing fun stuff. Right. And I think that's developed like most things, like as a community, um, you start seeing people doing things that you like over and over. You, you want to get to know them, and it's like next thing you know, you're hanging out, changing ideas, right, and stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, I think you know, people get out, go try stuff. People are, you know, you get Instagram, you get all this stuff thrown at you all the time. And it's like, well, we can do it ourselves here, right? Well, I think Richmond too, and also across the country, kind of a blow up of culinary stat with the the food network and all that right. where people are a lot more in touch with it or kind of seeing behind the scenes a little bit more right. and trying their hand at it's a little bit more approachable and there's a lot more um, avenues to learn about Sue that you don't right. necessarily know about. Right. And, and learn the personalities behind the place, understand the people behind the business. And so that's what we try to do here this conversation. And I know in talking to you guys, with all of that you just said, and then some, you saw a need. Mm -hmm. You felt like Wishbone would fill a need, especially with breakfast, because there's not a lot of breakfast um, spots no. here. Yeah, it's like, or they're closed on Sundays and Mondays. Right. <laughs> you know, that's the thing in restaurants. It's like, those are generally like the slowest days. Right. So people close, but, you know, it's like, we're open on Monday, so right. a lot of restaurants, people can still come here and have brunch. Right. Um, but, yeah, we felt the need down here. We could definitely focus on the business side and be close to residential areas, too, to where we can grow into that as well, okay. fulfill that need. Yeah, I mean, there's, as far as breakfast and you know, a different style of lunch. There's not really a whole lot down here. Right. I mean, you've got that aren't sandwich, chains that aren't chains like down. Um, what at the Omni? Right. Or Hotels. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but also coffee too. We have the coffee shop on Eighth Street, but what's that? Septon. Septon. Um, but there's not another coffee option. I feel like there's a Starbucks nearby. But versus going, you know, because we've right. got full coffee options here, too. So. Right. And we always buy local <laughs> here. Yeah. here. And exactly. Virginia's for lo lovers and for Virginia's for local. And our coffee, we're all business. Getting, we're getting from Afterglow, right. which is Good. a Scots edition. Yes. And they're a, um, a co-op. So they're right. like employee owned. Right. And they reached out to us. We met them yeah. and they educated us about coffee and they were just good people. So it's like, those are the kind of people we like to do business with. Right. Good. And then they come in here and have, you know, come and get lunch. And it's just like starts our building our community wider and wider. Yeah. I, just, I feel like as a community, there's a connectivity with all of the local restaurants and eateries, which I think is a beautiful thing. And I think it helps um, with the overall presentation of culinary arts here in the city of Richmond, and you guys are definitely a part of it. Now, you two are partners in business, partners in life. Mm -hmm. How challenging and successful at the same time it is to work together. And this is a demanding business. I've learned that when I first started yes, in business and, and in commercial real estate, you spend a lot of hours here making your business, and the restaurant industry is no exception work. So... How do you guys do it all? How you make it work? How do we do it, Jenny? I don't know. <laughs> I forgot. How do we do this? I don't, I don't feel like we have to make it work. I don't okay. know. I mean, I think, feel like I we're, think we trust each other and we value each other's opinion. Excellent. And then it's also at the same time, you know, I'm a kitchen person. You know, it's like I make food. That's my creative outlet. And Jenny has a been on the front of house side of things and then handling decor and all this stuff and pulling it together you know she's done an amazing job and so it's like yeah I think it's like we both respect we're fortunate there's work ethic yes that we know and we're both 
and we're probably both, you know, in that we are, we've been doing it for so long, we're a little OCD about certain stuff. <laughs> but that's, you know, could be a good thing, you know, to keep it, keep it growing. But this so. is our first time working together, too, and it's all Really? Like, I, mean, I didn't know that. Yeah, we've never worked together before. All right. When you guys are making it work. Yeah. We never cross the streams. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we get along really well. We don't really, you know, or if one of us is having a mood, you know, be like, okay. Right. But everybody has a part. We, we sense it. Yeah. Or I sense it. <laughs> Good answer. I want to keep making my cookies. Yeah, I think. <laughs> we communicate well, so I think that helps definitely a lot. Yeah. Good. On this platform, you know, we want to educate, um, want to encourage, want to inspire. So undoubtedly there's someone out there that's looking at this program and hearing you guys share your story. And they have a love for food. They're passionate about cooking and sharing their concepts, those ideas to the world, uh, to the city. Give them some advice. Or let me rephrase my question. Share with them one of your challenges in this industry. Talk about how you overcome it and inspire them to one day be where you are as far as um, operators of a great and fun establishment known, wish, known as Wishbone. Call Raw for space. Appreciate that. Appreciate <laughs> that. Tried finding one by myself. That is a workout. <laughs> <laughs> Same everybody made it through. One to twins. <laughs> One to twins. Uh, I'd say the, def- the biggest thing is just be open. Be open-minded. I mean, there's so many different ways to do things. And just absorb. Just become a sponge and just, like, suck up as much knowledge and ideas that you can from anybody that inspires you. And it's like, I have tons of people that inspire me daily you know it's like you don't you don't stop i think you know i don't think i ever stop becoming like a student right you know i try to challenge myself like well i don't know how to do this well now it's like well it's my spot figure it out or now you have time to learn right you know focus on the um i'd say you know Go look at people that you love. You know, learn from them. I mean, because it is hard. It is. It is hard. It is hard. I feel like one of my things, as we were going through the process, you would ask me, "Are you sure you're going to do this? Can we do this?" And it was funny. Like, I don't think I ever doubted. And still to this day that we can pull it off. Whereas, you know, probably five, ten years ago, I would have maybe halfway through been like, oh, what are we doing? But I don't think I've ever doubted that we can pull it off. So that's, that's huge, no way that it can. And knowing that you, you're going to have to work, you know, you're not, you're front of the house, you're back of the house, you're washing dishes, you're doing everything. And that's... You've got to do everything. Mm-hmm. So you can't expect your employees to do stuff that you won't do. So. Excellent. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, I can't tell somebody to do something that I can't do myself. Yeah. As it's like, this is how I want you to do it. We'll do it together. You know, it's like, yeah, I mean, it's scary. It is scary. I'm not going to lie to you. But it's also, you know. I've opened a lot of restaurants for other people, yes. other restaurants, and so I kind of know how it goes, you know. Granted, when you're doing it for yourself, it's kind of like, okay, whoa. It's a lot more than just what I've done in the past, mm. um, where I just had to worry about kitchen. Right. You know, that was my little bubble. Like, right. As long as my food is good. As long as my costs are down. Right. Yeah. But now it's like, here it's great, because it's I can cook and see who comes in the front door. <laughs> right, you can. It's it's awesome. I'm not in like a secret dungeon, <laughs> you know, where I don't know what time of day it is. Or right, that tends to happen. You can just be yeah. in the little corner, your back room of the building, 
cooking your heart out, but you never get to engage with the people that you're trying to um, put a smile on their face and a warm place in their heart. Yeah, and it's like any time that you see somebody smile when they eat or share something or, you know, just stand in front of your restaurant, they just came out and they're talking and they're laughing. I mean, those are the rewards that are like instant. Priceless. You know, for me. So where it's like, okay, wow, they liked it. They liked what I made them. <laughs> like, yay. I'm going to get so. you guys out of here with this because you've had a long day and you're going to get back up early in the morning and do it all over again. So please yeah. know I, I appreciate you. Oh, you Thank appreciate you so much. It too, bro. Thank you guys. I appreciate so much. you a lot. <laughs> appreciate you. Um, I want you to tell everybody how they can, re- how they can reach you, the hours um, of wish, um, Wishbone here, all your social media. Share with um, the audience how they can learn more about you. Definitely want them to come down and check you out and join me for breakfast or lunch here at Wishbone. So your social media contacts are? Instagram, Wishbone Food Shop. Yeah. um, And then Facebook. Wishbone Food Shop. Yeah. Uh, We are in the process of working on our website. That has got a little bit of a, more of a process than we thought. It's on the list. That'll be Creators. Want an opportunity, want a wonderful opportunity to partner up. (laughs) You know, maybe we can barter some services. Hit, hit, hit. So, Monday through Friday. Yes, I was operation. So we're Monday through Friday, um, 7 to 3. Breakfast is from 7 to 10.30. And then lunch is from 10.30 to 3. Uh, and then we do have full coffee options, lattes, chai lattes, espresso, the whole deal. That's all day long. Um Check in Instagram for any daily specials as far as sandwiches and soups is a good way to keep track of doing that. Check them out on IG, Wish Bone Food Shop for all your specials. This has been another episode of Brick by Brick. Thank you so much. We will see you again real soon. Hey, guys, if you enjoyed the content of this episode and want to learn more about how I help my clients master the aspects of CRE, please subscribe to my fan base account right below. Please like, comment, and subscribe to this channel so you can get more great content just like this.